for 40 years, we've known that there are huge differences in student achievement gains in different classrooms. And yet, almost everywhere, teacher evaluation has been a perfunctory exercise. That's crazy. <laughs> The current method of evaluating teachers is completely subjective. It can't possibly be uh, <laughs> any worse. It is not one that predicts student achievement. It is not one that determines why one teacher is highly effective and the next is not. Currently, teachers are evaluated upon one basic observation or snapshot of their work. It could be fair, it could not be fair. It just depends on the relationship that you have with your principal. The principal walks in, stands there uh, while you teach nervously. The principal doesn't want to say anything too harsh and you don't want to hear anything too harsh. I may have my own interpretation and it may differ from yours and yours as well, so I don't think we have the consensus when it comes to teacher effectiveness. There's, there's no guidance, there's no roadmap. Any teacher will tell you that teaching is complex. So the more measures used in the final evaluation, I think the more realistic it is in capturing what the teacher does well and what the teacher can improve on. If we had a roadmap which was objective and clearly articulated, then teachers I think would feel comfortable because they would see that that same roadmap is being applied to everyone and hence that would make it fair. We look for different things. Administrators look for one thing. Students care about other things mm -hmm. like level of activity, mm -hmm. level of hands-on engagement, but when you combine the teacher's own reflections of their own teaching plus student surveys, plus administrative evaluation, and also take into account the functioning of the school and how well that school works in dealing with difficult and challenging students. All of those perspectives give us a more holistic view mm -hmm. of our effectiveness. Yeah. With the videos, you get to see yourself in a different way. Actually, you never really get to see yourself until you watch a video of yourself. I changed immediately certain things that I did that I didn't like. Well, as a first year teacher, it was really interesting for me to have to go back and watch myself how did I stand? How did I address students? Making myself go back and look at that helped me just personally to reflect. Even the things I did well, I was like, okay, that's pretty good. Why do I do that? With student surveys, they see you every day. They can be the ones to say, well, Ms. Jackson, we like it when you do something this way rather than when you do it this way. Linking teacher evaluations to student test scores is certainly important. It would be a mistake not to look at student outcomes and evaluating a teacher's effectiveness. Obviously what is more difficult is to create fair tests that are not overly burdensome on the student's time um, or the teacher's time in preparing them for it. And I think that's the greatest challenge in using test scores. Underline what happened. You're always looking for how you can be a better teacher, how you can be more effective, how you can get through to more of your students. If I found out a teaching method has lots of research behind it and it worked in thousands of classrooms all across the U.S., I would have no problem using that in my classroom. And then also with that research, hopefully it will come reinforcements and tools to help teachers become effective. In the end, the multiple measures allows the teacher to better trust the results in the sense that you know there isn't any one 45 minutes that makes or breaks the teacher. If we have data from teachers all around the country, from different types of schools, different types of geographic areas, different types of socioeconomic areas, and we gather all that data, I think that makes them more reliable. And right now, that's not in place.